In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. May your right hand, O Lord, we pray, encompass your family with perpetual help, so that defended from all wickedness by the resurrection of your only begotten Son, we may make our way by means of your heavenly gifts. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. There was an attempt in Iconium by both the Gentiles and the Jews, together with their leaders, to attack and stone Paul and Barnabas. They realized it and fled to the Iconian cities of Lystra and Derbe and to the surrounding countryside, where they continued to proclaim the good news. At Lystra, there was a crippled man, lame from birth, who had never walked. He listened to Paul speaking, who looked intently at him, saw that he had the faith to be healed, and called out in a loud voice, Stand up straight on your feet. He jumped up and began to walk about. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they cried out in Lyconian, The gods have come down to us in human form. They called Barnabas Zeus and Paul Hermes because he was the chief speaker. And the priest of Zeus, whose temple was at the entrance to the city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates, for he, together with the people, intended to offer sacrifice. The apostles Barnabas and Paul tore their garments when they heard this and rushed out into the crowd, shouting, Men, why are you doing this? We are of the same nature as you, human beings. We proclaim to you good news that you should turn from these idols to the living God, who made heaven and earth and sea and all that is in them. In past generations, he allowed all Gentiles to go their own ways. Yet, in bestowing his goodness, he did not leave himself without witness, for he gave you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons and filled you with nourishment and gladness for your hearts. Even with these words, they scarcely restrained the crowds from offering sacrifice to them the word of the Lord. Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory because of your mercy, because of your truth. Why should the pagans say, where is their God? Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. Our God is in heaven. Whatever he wills, he does. Their idols are silver and gold, the handiwork of men. Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. May you be blessed by the Lord who made heaven and earth. Heaven is the heaven of the Lord, but the earth he has given to the children of men. Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. Whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. 
Judas, not the Iscariot, said to him, Master, then what happened that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered and said to him, Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. Yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I, was, while I am with you. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. The Gospel of the Lord. So on Saturday, Jesus talks about faith, and we talked a little bit about faith here, what, what real faith was, more than just saying, yes, okay, I believe, but actually resulting in something, some kind of action. Today, the talk is about love. Jesus talks about love. So what is love? Imagine a person who says, or she says, that that person loves you, but then acts in a way which is completely not consistent with that feeling. What is real love? Real love, right, is more than just a hallmark card. Real love results in something. Real love can be seen in a certain way. Right? There's faith in love because love shows itself. We can see what happens and we can understand that there is love there. Real love actually results in something. So then, what is love of God. What is love of God the Father, love of God the Son, love of God the Spirit? What is love of God, real love of God? It must be more than just saying, I love God. Jesus kind of tells us what it is right here. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. Love, like faith, is active. It results in something. There's an active love here. If you really love God, you follow Him. If you really love God, you keep His word. And he goes on to talk a little bit about that. And to the one who loves me, I will reveal myself. I reveal myself to Him, to the one who loves me. Every day I make a prayer that I see Christ in the people around me. I see Christ in the people. It's easier in some people, I suppose, than in other people, right? But every day I make that prayer that I see Christ in the people around me. Does Christ reveal himself to me throughout the day? Well, part of that is on me, right? Am I looking? Am I striving to see Christ? Am I meeting him halfway? To those who love me, I will reveal myself to them. They will be able to see me in the world around them and in the people around them in the good actions around. All good actions, all good comes from God. And when we see the good in others, we are seeing the act of God working through them. Their cooperation, of course, with the grace of God. And for the one who loves me, Jesus says, my Father and I will come to dwell with him. Come and make our dwelling with him. There's a great uh, image that I've seen before and I've spoken about before, and after I spoke about it, somebody gave me a smaller image of it. It's an image of Jesus Christ knocking on a door, and the door has no knob on the outside. So he knocks on the door, but the door needs to be opened from the inside. To the one who loves me, I will come and make my dwelling with him. Love me, a real love. Act on that love. See me in that love, and I will be with you in a special way. So, how do we do it? How do we know it? How do we follow those commandments? The one who keeps my commandments. How do we follow those commandments? Jesus finishes this little uh, passage here with a promise that the Holy Spirit will come upon us and teach us everything. Jesus promises he will send the Holy Spirit upon the church. The church itself, the church itself is steered by the Holy Spirit. And it is an aid for us to follow Christ. Real faith, real love, it's not just lip service. Apparently, it's real action.
We bring our needs before our Almighty God with confidence that our, pra that our prayers will be heard. That our church leaders may be conformed by Christ evermore into his image in their preaching of the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders of nations and peoples may be guided by the generous and compassionate hand of God in all they do. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those in this faith community may be drawn closer to the Lord in his fullness through the grace of the sacraments. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died may know the glory of God and rest in eternal peace at his side. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the end of this pandemic, and for all those intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Generous and merciful God, we ask that you listen to the prayers we have placed before you through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> may our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, 
which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be.
Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal sacrifice and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving grace, the saving food, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. O oh God, our Father, mercifully look, look upon your people who come to you and grant through the intercession of St. Rosalie, who turned away from earthly delights to the joys of contemplation, that we may be delivered from the illness that has spread across the world. St. Rosalie, patroness of our parish, we pray to God for all people. Through your powerful prayers, may we obtain eternal salvation. We pray too that you whose aid was invoked by the people of Palermo in a time of pestilence, may intercede today for us who turn to you in need. O glorious Virgin, our patroness, pray too that we may always follow your example of faith and devotion. Amen.